was in the desert. Looks familiar. <laughs> I think I know this book. <laughs> yeah, I know this book. But what makes a book more than a book and what makes it reality is when God breathes life into each and every one of us that after spending a night of sleep that we could change our minds and bring them into the presence of God by what we read or what we see or what we hear. And you know, that's what reading your Bible will help you do as you reprogram yourself, so to speak, just like a computer's reprogrammed. You change your mind by the renewing there of it, by reading your Bible and understanding and just letting it soak into your brain without you ever knowing that it's going there. <laughs> That's fun. But there's also more to it, and you have a time of prayer and conversation with God, I hope, and that you get a chance to have a devotion with Him. And if you have any devotion, or you have emotional devotion to God, and you want to spend it, like keeping someone else accountable, then you spend it with me, and you make sure that I'm reading mine, just by checking me out and make sure that, hey, did he read that today? <laughs> Did God speak to him today? And you know what? When you do, as you're following up on me, he's speaking to you. Praise the Lord. Isn't it amazing how that works? For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Romans 3.3 3. I think that I can trace every scrap of sorrow in my life to simple unbelief. How can I be anything but quite happy if I believed always that all the past is forgiven, and all the present is furnished with all that I need, and all the future bright with hope because of the same abiding facts which do not change with my mood, and do not stumble because I totter and stagger, or have somehow been forgotten because I don't recognize the promise because of unbelief, but still stand firm and clear with their peaks of pearl cleaving the air of eternity and the bases of their hills rooted unfathomable in the rock of God. <laughs> Mont Blanc, <laughs> that's overseas by the way, <laughs> does not become a phantom or a mist because a climber grows dizzy on its heights. Is it any wonder that when we stagger at any promise of God through unbelief, we do not receive it? Not that faith merits an answer, or in any way because we believe we earn it. No, not that, but God has made believing a condition of receiving. He said, if you believe, you would receive. And the giver has a sovereign right to choose how he bestows the gift. Unbelief says, how can such and such a thing happen? It can't be. It is full of hows. But faith has one great answer to the 10,000 hows. And that is one answer, God. <laughs> no praying man or woman accomplishes so much with so little expenditure of time as when he or she is praying. If there should arise, it has been said, and the words are surely true to the thought of our Lord Jesus Christ in all his teaching on prayer, but if there should arise one utterly believing man the history of the world would be changed. Will you not be that one in the providence and guidance of God our Father? Prayer without faith denigrates into objectless routine or soulless hypocrisy. Prayer with faith brings omnipotence to back our petitions. Prayer better not pray unless and until your whole being responds to the efficacy or the ability of your supplication when the true prayer is breathed earth and heaven the past and the future say amen and christ prayed such prayers you know the beauty of what jesus did in praying was that he said i don't do this father for my sake because i know that you know whatever i ask you i'll get he said i don't do it because i don't know you he says i know you but he said i do it for those that are there and are watching and listening and that's why he prayed out loud or in crowds. But when Jesus taught, he said, go in secret, go away from the crowds, be alone with God, and then prove to yourself something that's very true that I have found in my life that maybe you will too. Take a chance and 
take a reality check and see if God does answer prayer. Write it down. Write down something, some little thing. You know, start little or start big, it doesn't matter. But check it out. See if there's something you've asked for God and write it down and put a date on it. And then see if he doesn't answer in some way. Be real. He'll make you in some way connect the dots and see that he's answered all your prayers. He has. I have told every single person I know, all my prayers are answered. They may be few and far between because at times I don't think that I need as much as I see some people like to, you know, constantly pray. But I figure if I told God once, he's got it covered. <laughs> I guess that's faith or it's divine belligerence. <laughs> but if he's God, I figure he knows better than I do. So, Lord, you do and I'm happy. <laughs> But I know that there are people that have issues with prayer and when they think that their prayers are unanswered or some other crazy symbol, of symbolic gesture towards doctrine. But if you think of prayer as conversation, then when you get to the place of intercourse, meaning that you say something and then he says something, and then you say something and he says something, and when you hear him speak, he hears you speak and you begin to make that dialogue then you're beginning to find out what prayer really is it's having a conversation with God and if you could just think of it that practical that easy that childlike then all your prayers would be answered because don't you answer your children when they call upon you haven't you spoken to your child when it comes up to you and says mommy or daddy and you respond, so too your Heavenly Father is greater than all the mommies and all the daddies. And He responds very much so to you and to me. Now, I believe I hear it because I know I do. There's no doubt, and sometimes even audibly. But no matter how He chooses to respond to me or to you, He always, always, will respond and there's only one reason why he always will now as opposed to when he used to say in the old testament about well your sins have separated you from god you know and blah 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 it's because jesus hadn't died yet and there was no propitiation this whole idea of god has covered all of our sins past present and future by the sacrifice that jesus did so that there would be an open door presented to you so you could know the father and when you know him, when he becomes your daddy, when he becomes your heavenly father, when he becomes someone to be desired to have a conversation with, you'll know your prayers are answered, all of them. So take time today. Have a conversation with God. He is speaking.